In this video, we're going to look at Elastic Audio Track Views. There are two track views that are used on Elastic Audio enabled tracks, Analysis View and Warp View. The Analysis View is one that you won't use very often. It lets you edit detected event markers. Elastic Audio analyzes most clips with a high degree of accuracy, but sometimes, when working with material that does not have obvious transients, you may need to use Analysis View to add, move, or delete event markers. On the other hand, Warp View is used to manually warp audio to adjust its timing. This is where you create and edit warp markers and make adjustments to the timing of performances. It's used much more frequently than Analysis View. There are three types of Elastic Audio markers in Pro Tools. Event markers, warp markers, and tempo event generated warp markers. All three types of markers are visible in Warp View, whereas only event markers are visible in Analysis View. First, we'll look at event markers. Event markers indicate audio events that were either automatically detected by Elastic Audio or manually created by the user. They're displayed as solid black lines in the analysis view or gray lines in the warp view, and they do not fully extend to the top and bottom of the track. You can use the grabber to reposition event markers in the analysis view or to warp audio in the warp view. Now let's look at warp markers. Warp markers are only displayed in the warp view and are used to anchor audio to the timeline. They appear as thick black lines with a blue triangle at their base. Once a warp marker has been created, it anchors a piece of audio to the timeline while you stretch or compress parts of the clip. We'll look at other warping functionality in just a minute. The third type of marker is the tempo event generated warp marker. These appear as gray vertical lines with a diamond at the top. These markers are not editable and are used to indicate where elastic audio processing has been applied to conform the audio to a tempo change. Note that if you change the track time base from ticks to samples, tempo event generated warp markers will automatically be converted to regular warp markers. You can add, move, and delete event markers using Analysis View. If you're happy with the elastic audio analysis of the clip, you won't need to use Analysis View. However, you will need to use Analysis View if you want to make manual corrections. There are a variety of ways to add an event marker in Analysis View. With the pencil, you can click anywhere in the clip. With the grabber, you can double click or control click on Mac or start click on Windows at the location where you want to add the marker. And with any tool, you can right click and choose add event marker from the pop-up menu. To reposition an event marker, you can use either the grabber or the pencil and drag the marker to a new location. To delete an event marker, you can use the pencil or the grabber and either option click on Mac or alt click on Windows on the event marker you want to delete. With the selector tool, you can select a range of event markers and then simply press the delete key on your computer keyboard or select a range of event markers and right click and choose remove event marker. In warp view, you can use warp markers to manually stretch or compress areas of audio. This applies the TCE processing algorithm that's part of your selected Elastic Audio plugin. To add warp markers, you can use the pencil tool and click anywhere in the clip, or you can use the grabber and either control click on the Mac or start click on Windows, or also with the grabber, you can simply double click, or using any tool, you can right click and choose add warp marker. To reposition a warp marker without applying warping, you can use the pencil tool and drag the marker to a new location. Or using the grabber, you can control click on Mac or start click on Windows and move the marker. To delete a warp marker, use the grabber and double click. Use the grabber or pencil and option click on Mac or alt click on Windows or with any edit tool, right click on the marker and choose remove warp marker from the pop-up menu. You can also use the selector tool to select a range of warp markers and then press delete on your computer keyboard or right click the selection and choose remove warp marker. Now let's take a look at warping audio. There are three kinds of manual warps in Pro Tools, telescoping warp, accordion warp, and range warp. To use the telescoping warp, create a warp marker 
and then click and drag an event marker either before or after the warp marker. You can also use the telescoping warp when there are no warp markers in the clip. In this case, Pro Tools will automatically create a warp marker at the clip start. The next type of warp we'll look at is the accordion warp. The accordion warp will warp audio on both sides of a single warp marker in the clip. To use the accordion warp, add a single warp marker at the point that you want to anchor to the timeline. Then use the grabber tool to drag an event marker on either side of the warp marker. Finally, let's take a look at the range warp. Range warp is probably the most useful type of manual warp and is used frequently to change the timing of vocal as well as instrumental performances. To apply a range warp to a clip, add a warp marker at the first point that you want to fix to the timeline, then add a second warp marker at the end point that you want to fix to the timeline, Finally, create a third warp marker between the first two, and then click and drag to either time compress or expand the audio. When a clip has been warped either manually or automatically, Pro Tools will display a warp indicator in the clip's upper right-hand corner. You can toggle this view on and off by going to the View menu, selecting Clip, and enabling or disabling Processing State. If you decide you want to remove clip warping, simply select the clip and then either choose Clip, Remove Warp, or right-click the clip and choose Remove Warp from the pop-up menu. 